What is happening everybody? Well, we have got another tech day with patina and today I'm gonna show you bump steer. This is a gauge right here that will tell you what your bump steer is. Here is the actual dial gauge that will give you the bad news or the good news. What you do is you got this plate here. You bolt the plate to your hub. That will then give you the flat surface that will, is the measurement in height of your suspension travel. And what happens is this gauge here leans over on this plate and it tells you what your bump steer is. What is bump steer? Bump steer is the relation of your toe change on the suspension up travel or down travel. Since we're doing some road racing with this here hot rod, we want to make sure that our bump steer is true and by true I mean mean within reason. Now this is still a relatively mm, stock-ish suspension design. I do have my ball joint drop brackets on patina. I'm going to go ahead and remove one and put it back to stock to show you guys the difference between your stock bump steer and the modified bump steer that I have done with these drop brackets. This is mostly just to inform you guys of bump steer. You know, the guys that want to run the ball joint drop brackets, hey, this is just another benefit of it. But this is mostly just to educate you guys on what you can do to adjust for bump steer. Some guys will take the stock steering arm, they'll torch it, they'll raise it up, or they'll drop it, depending on the bump steer that they need. Now, why would you need to adjust the bump, bump steer on your car? Okay. Well, as your suspension, okay, this is your front tire. As the suspension is going through its travel, okay, it might tow in, it might tow out, you know, which is going to affect the car going up and down through the suspension travel. If you can keep that front tire true and straight while it's hitting bumps, this, then the better the car is going to handle as it's going, as it's diving down, unloading, going into the corner, out of the corner. You won't have to fight the steering wheel as much. Now, if the car tows in on your bump steer, which is the compression of the bump, then the car is going to tow in more as the car goes into the corner, which is going to create a push situation. You don't want that. If the car tows out too much on your bump, which is, you know, again, the compression, then it will create an oversteer situation and you'll have to be putting more steering wheel input into the car. So, we're gonna go ahead and get the gauge all set up and we will get back to you in just a minute. The bump steer gauge is installed. It is ready to start doing some bumping. But before I get to that, I wanna do, oh, you yeah, know, okay, Bolt, all right, yeah. I kinda of wanna give you some background on why the Mopars suck for doing bump steer. It's because the steering on these cars, their rear steer, Okay, you got the steering linkage behind the control arm instead of in front of it. And when the steering is behind the control arm, well, it has to go below the oil pan and the torsion bar. And when you have to go below the oil pan and the torsion bar, it really screws with the bump because everything is supposed to work in sync. The upper, the angle of the upper control arm, the, the lower control arm, and the steering arm, the uh, tie rod sleeve, the, whatever you want to call it, that all, they're all supposed to intersect. So if you draw a line from the upper going down, and you draw a line from the lower control arm going over, and you draw a line from your steering tie rod, your steering link going all the way over, those are all supposed to connect and intersect. So that way that will give you a perfect zero bump steer. But because the Mopars have steering below the oil pan and below the torsion bar, you can't get that. Well, you can. It just takes a lot of tweaking and tuning in which I have had to do here to patina. One thing I found out on patina, the one inch upper ball joint, so they're one inch taller, you cannot get those to bump out correctly. I try, I, you can, but the amount of angle that is in the lower, con, or the, uh, the, the steering link is so drastic, it's ridiculous. And so 
to try and keep everything within reason on this Mopar, it was best to just go ahead and eliminate the one inch upper ball joint, which it did lower the roll center, but with that lower drop bracket that I've got, you know, the one that I've showed you guys, the one that I made, the one that I'm selling on eBay, the roll center is still far, far better <coughs> than it was stock. So, because when you lower a car, that upper control arm is getting angle in it anyway. And since we're trying to go for that lowered feel, better handling lower center of gravity, we don't even really need that one inch taller upper ball joint anyway, so it all worked out. But let's go to the chalkboard. <laughs> chalkboard, whiteboard. And it's a little one at that. I need to get a bigger one so I can explain things better for you guys. Okay, here we go. This is kind of the stock Mopar suspension. Now the, the ball joint's not dropped. It doesn't have a huge tall one inch upper on it. And this big old block here, well that's the engine and the oil pan. You see we got the drag link which is underneath that. And these are just pickup points. So that's the outer tie rod, the inner tie rod. That is the inner pivot point for the lower control arm. That's the outer ball joint, upper ball joint. And that's the inner pivot bushings for the upper control arm. Now, another re like what would be perfect is if this guy would just overlap that guy. That would be absolutely perfect. But you can't do that because you have a torsion bar that goes into the back of the control arm. So then the whole steering system has to go below that, has to go below the oil pan. And so then your bump steer is out of whack. And on a stock Mopar, the bump steer is horrible. Like if you jack the front end of the car up, you notice that it will pigeon toe in. So the front tires will just tow in towards each other. Now, if you slam the car to the ground, you'll know that the bump steer will tow out. And so anytime you change the ride height on a Mopar, you have to readjust your tow. That's how bad the bump steer is. And so in a perfect world, you want your bump steer to be nice and true throughout its entire suspension travel. Now, you've heard me talk about roll center in the last video, center of gravity and all that. Anytime you change your roll center, you have to redo the entire bump on your car. So on my ball joint drop brackets, you know, we're dropping the ball joint. Let's just, let's just guess down to here, which will then also drop the steering, you know, down to here. So now we have a lower control arm angle that is like this. And then we have a steering angle that is then like this. See now to get perfect zero bump, you know, you'd have to extend that line out and it'll end up way over here. You have to extend this guy out. Let's just assume it's going to end up right. Just for shits and giggles, we're going to go right there. Well, in order for me to get zero bump steer, this and this, my my steering link, will then have to meet and intersect at that same point, which you can't do that on a Mopar. The only thing, the well, you could drastically drop this down, but then you start running into tire interference with the uh, outer tie rod. What you want to do is you want to go up and you want to match the height of the lower control arm but because the torsion bar and the engines in the way you can't do that you can you can tweak it and go up a little bit with different stud lengths on your tie rods but you can't get it perfect right there perfect world that would be up now and whatever you do here is going to amplify more than what you do out here so if I go down, let's just say a half inch here, well, probably only needed a quarter inch of adjustment up in this range. See, now what I was telling you earlier about the one is taller upper ball joint, so we'll go with this guy here. Well, now that angle is more drastic and it was down here. So then this would either have to go lower or this would have to go even higher to match that to give zero bump steer. So. But because of the way the Mopar steering is, it was really hard to get that bump. I found it better just to X, X out. 
the one inch taller ball joint bring that back down because with the drop ball with the drop brackets the suspension can go up higher anyway and you'll end up getting more angle out of that just from the droop so the one inch taller upper ball joints i have found that they are not good they are horrible for a bump steer on a mopar it is really hard to net zero on that i'm actually running out of daylight and it's hot i'm sweaty uh, let me show you what i have got here and how i have done this all right here is patina's left front suspension that is the ball joint drop bracket right there so it actually drops the ball joint an inch and a half so that way you get better roll centers and better um camber gain and more suspension travel now what you might see right here this is a bump steer bump steer kit so this is actually a stud right here and it comes with different shim lengths and all that and basically you bolt it in place like a regular tie rod but it allows you to shim out and adjust your bump steer now this link right here is pretty much just mocked up then this is not correct because I've got a 5 8 uh, Heim welded to a 9 16 um, you know, threaded end. And then my inner tie rod right here, my inner tie rod, I actually cut the stud on that, made it a half inch taller. So I raised my inner tie rod a half inch, just enough to where I still have plenty of clearance on the torsion bar to help fix the bump steer. You might not be able to see this as well on camera, but trust me, the measurements and from my eye, looking directly at the side, this drag link has angle in it downhill towards the driver's side. And the reason for that is it's a different pitman arm. That's not an OEM pitman arm. That's, you know, it's a Moog replacement or it's a, actually I think that's a Pro Forged. So that's a Pro Forged pitman arm and it's a Pro Forged idler arm. And it just so happens to be that once they're bolted on, you have difference in heights, which those difference in heights will throw off the bump steer. Like that side over there is lower. So what I'm gonna have to do is bend the idler arm up with some heat and a jack just to get the drag link back to level so the bump steer is even from side to side. Cause a quarter inch downhill, three eighths, whatever, that makes a difference on your bump steer. And if you want, trying to keep the steering wheel as true as possible, that's just another thing you're going to have to check is the drag link. Make sure it's parallel. And if you can, bump it up as high as you can. That will give you even better bump steer and make it to where you don't have to adjust as much on the outer end. If you can get it higher on the inside, that is what you want. Because the Mopars are already detrimental, like I said, with the steering linkage being under the pivot point for the control arm but if you look at the plane that the upper control arm is on and you follow that through just pretend it goes all the way through and then you look at the plane that the lower control arm is on you have to go from the ball joint to the center of the uh, torsion bar and you follow that plane and you follow that plane and then you follow the steering link they will all intersect at the same point which gives you net zero bump steer now if i had taken this steering link right here and i had adjusted the bump stop shim or the bump stop the bump steer shims say i raised it up a little bit well that is actually going to make it tow out as the suspension goes up because now this will not be matching the intersecting point this will be uphill and as the suspension goes up and the steering goes up because this link will increase at more angle than these will it, it what that does is it pulls the back of the tire in if i add more angle if i drop this down more as the suspension comes up well as that wants to let if as the steering link wants to straighten out that pushes the tire out which makes it tow in so that's how you can look at a bump steer is the relation of this angle compared to the others if you drop that down that's going to make it tow in. If you pull this up, that's going to make it tow out as the suspension goes through its travel dynamically. 
All right, another factor that makes it a little bit more difficult on doing bump steer with a Mopar is the fact that the upper control arms have anti-dive in it. That's the angle of the control arm. I'm exaggerating it, but it's like this. So upon braking, you know, the braking force, the caliper is trying to stop the rotor from spinning, which is then going to pull on the control arm that way. And so as you hit the brakes, it's trying to level out that upper control arm, which adds spring rate or force preventing the front end from slamming down upon braking. But as the suspension does compress, this goes like this. You know, it, the control arm is angled like that, so then as this goes up, it doesn't go straight up and down. No, it goes at an angle like this. And of course, I'm exaggerating it, but you will see it in the plate. So, on the bump steer plate, I have to offset the bump steer plate because the tire doesn't go perfectly straight up and down it goes like this and you will see that uh, okay see where the needles at right now, or the uh, the pintle is at right now well as we go through the bump this is actually going to end up being over here which actually I need to offset it a little bit more there we go or no wait oh wrong way I need to go this way yep so let me get this back on zero here okay right there there see now the plate is going to go up like this all right so i've changed i've swapped out the one inch upper taller upper ball joint to the standard length i have bent my actually i didn't bend it what i did just for mock-up i had made my inner tie rod half inch taller which will simulate me bending up my pitman arm because right now my pitman arm is downhill compared to the idler which messes with the bump steer so i have mocked that up to where it's a half inch taller one inch shorter i went ahead and, and adjusted my uh, bump steer here let's go ahead and see what we net with all right here we go the climb uphill 30 thousands 40 50 60 70 75 yeah seeing it's starting to come back now 40 30 we got about 20 we have about 25 thousands in just over three inches of suspension travel we have 25 thousands of toe out which isn't shit that is nothing in in the street world that's nothing would i like it to be dead on zero yeah and if i the more time i spend with it the closer i can get with it but right now it's 105 degrees and i'm gonna call that good enough and part of the reason you have to call it good enough is like i said the spindle is being pulled back and as the suspendles as the pintle pintle as the spindle is being pulled back when it goes up through its suspension travel well it is also dropping that guy so that's part that's why it's hard to do the bump steer on a car that has anti-dive in it because the holes the wheels being pulled back which then drops the the steering tie rod and the wheel has actually pulled back almost a half inch from where it started so yep anti-dive is a good thing but you kind of just have to find a happy median when it comes to setting your bump because that anti-dive is going to fight you by the spindle rotating. All right, come on. Grab the control arm. There it goes. All right, so now we're 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 40, 50, 50, 4, 53, 60, and it's starting to come back. Yep, and actually we have less than that this time. We got like 16 thousandths of, of toe out on bump, which I actually would rather have more than that. I mean, I actually would rather have it toe out. So. Once I tow the car in, I mean, once I set the toe on this thing, it actually, the bump steer should be right where I want it. All right, well, <clears throat> that just kind of goes to explain a little bit of bump steer. It's late, 
and you know I should have been a little bit more prepared on this trying to make a video for bump steer but I'm just trying to explain to you guys basically kind of what bump steer is how you can adjust it how you can fix it and you can't just mm, look at a suspension and assume oh yeah that bump is pretty close now the best way to do it is with a gauge and if you need to make any kind of changes on bump steer the easiest way to do it is just to buy that kit that makes it to where it's adjustable length this way and but anytime oh it's like what is it like and it's like 101 degrees in the garage and it's dark outside but anytime you change the roll center on a car you have to readjust your bump because and i have already so those ball joint drop brackets i have already designed those to actually help fix some of the bump steer and so when you see them the i actually tilted the ball joint so it's the one the rearward holes are three-eighths of an inch farther apart which brings the steering outer tie rod end farther down towards the ground which will help eliminate some of that uh, toe out on bump steer so if you want to perfect it and get it you know as zero as much as possible there is ways you can do it but i would really suggest getting a bump steer gauge so that way you can know for sure what you're doing. All right. I'm hungry, I'm hot, I'm sweaty. I'm gonna go inside. All right, well, hopefully I educated you a little bit on bump steer. I know this probably wasn't the best way to explain it. There's probably YouTubers out there, uh, like race car engineering guys that will have a better way to explain the bump steer with charts and better whiteboards but uh thanks for watching guys and uh i'll see you later